the settings that I use in DJ Pro. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and we're going to talk about it. In this video, I'm going to be showing you over my shoulder a look at which settings that I use on a daily basis with DJ Pro, whether I'm at home or whether I am doing gigs. So you guys could see the settings that I use and decide for yourself if you want to use them or if you don't. Some of these settings I love and some of them I do not. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to show you guys obviously is the settings menu and see what settings that I use. So to access the settings menu, if you see my mouse, it's on this record over here, going up to this middle button. This is how you access all of the other screens and the settings and stuff like that. So we click on that. You go down here all the way to the right. It's a settings symbol. It's kind of like a like a wheel type thing. So we're going to click it. And now we are in our settings. So the first setting that you'll see is audio device setups. And this is only important if you're using a controller. So I'm going to plug in my DJ to go to touch controller and show you guys some of the settings with the controllers really quick. And if you want, there will be a link if you guys want to get this great controller, there'll be a link down below. So now we're going to plug in the controller. And now you see, you saw that it changed up here. So the first setting that I use is output to iPad speakers. So this means that all of the sound that's coming out of the DJ to go to touch is going to be the sound is going to come out of the speakers. Now I use this when I'm practicing scratching and I'm just practicing using the controller on my iPad and I don't need any big speakers or anything. It makes it really convenient to not have to set it up to speakers. So I always keep the output to iPad speakers when I am practicing at home. And then when I'm doing gigs, you have the main channels and then pre-queuing and then the booth and the microphone. So the settings I always do is keep it on to output of the speakers it just makes it convenient to test the controller see if it's working and that type of stuff so now i'm going to leave the settings menu and i'm going to press the middle button and i'm going to go over to pro mode now if you press the settings again you see if we're in classic you don't see this option only in the new pro mode you'll see this option over here and it says hardware mode so this could turn on hardware mode which gives you a different layout when you're using a controller. And I just think it's useless. This was a feature that they added in the new, in the new update. And I thought, why would you want to get used to and learn a whole new interface when you've been practicing for years with the other one? So you just go over here and you could turn off hardware mode. And that's, that's it with the controller. I'm going to unplug the controller and then keep going through this. So we unplug the controller. Let's go back to classic mode and let's go back to the settings. So now we're in settings. So we did audio device setup. Now let's see my general settings. So I always keep on protect active deck. So what this does is when you try to load a song into a deck that has the crossfader on and that is playing, it will, it'll give you this notification. So let's just go over here over here and then I'm gonna go to add a song to add a song you press this up here add a song and we're just gonna add this add this and then try to add it um, I think it has to be actually playing Play. hmm. let's make sure the setting is on Protect Active Deck. Done. So this is playing Active Deck. And then you get this. Right Deck Protected. You are about to load a song onto an Active Deck. Do you want to proceed? Load. So if you do want to add a song to that deck, you have the option. You could press OK, load it onto the Active Deck. If you don't, if you press it by accident, sometimes when you're DJing and you're in the mix and everything is going you know, everything's going crazy and stuff like that, you might press the, the wrong music button. Because if you press this button over here, it's going to load the song onto the right deck. If you press this over here, the other one, it's going to load it into the left deck. 
So if the song is playing and you try to load a song into it, you will get this notification. And this has saved me so many times from loading a song into the wrong deck. Because if you're trying to mix in a song, let's say the right deck is playing and then you're trying to mix in the song to the left and you're getting the mix perfect and then you go to load the song and the song was playing at full volume and then you just start a whole new song over, it could completely ruin your set. And that's why they added this feature and I think it's great and I recommend always keeping it on. Unless you're really confident that you'll never make that mistake, then the only benefit of having it off is you can load the tracks faster, which isn't really necessary. So song loading, we have start playback. This setting I think is on it, when you first download the app on your phone and your iPad, they have this setting on and I think it's super annoying. What it does is as soon as you load the deck, it starts playing the song. So let's do that. And then let's just load something in. And you see, I just loaded the deck, any song that I load, and it starts playing immediately. This could really throw you off because I like to load up a song, set the cue point, and then play it when I want to play it, not just play it as soon as I load it into a deck. So I definitely recommend keeping this setting off. So just turn it off. A reset EQ and tempo, I don't recommend having that on. What it does is when you load a new song, it'll reset the EQ and the tempo and all the adjustments. I like to do that on my own. So down here, sync is BPM and beats. You could do BPM only. This will make it so that it just gets the BPMs the same and it doesn't sync. But I sometimes like to use sync when I'm mixing and I don't think it's cheating. So I'm going to leave that sync type on. And then all of these I keep off, turn off on pause, scratch, cue, and jump. Tempo slider. I keep this at 75%. What this does is if you look over here at the tempo slider, the song is 125 and I could go all the way up to 220. If you change it, if you change it to, if you change it to eight, then you could only go 8% higher. I like to do big transitions. I like to do make nightcore songs and do high pitch and low pitch and do pitch play transitions. So I always keep it at 75%. If you only like to do small BPM changes, then I would recommend to keep it low because it makes these sliders that could be hard to use much more precise. Now we'll go back to general. You have you could invert this the tempo slider so left is right, right is left. It's really confusing, so I don't recommend doing that. Now this is really important. This is the start time and stop time. So if you put it on zero, as soon as you press play, it'll start the song. But if you put it on if we put it high, let's just do four seconds. The song will slowly build up to speed, so it'll start off slow and then get to the correct BPM, kind of like if it was an actual record and the motor was spinning, was starting up and getting the spin. I don't know why you would want to do it for the start track, so what I just, I just keep it at zero. And then the stop time is the same thing, but when you press pause, it'll slowly slow down the track. The only th way I use this is if I'm doing a transition from a large BPM to a small BPM, you can make the stop time really high and then use that slow, that slow decrease the tempo to do a transition. But besides that, I keep it at zero. And if I wanna do that type of transition, I'll go back into the settings and I'll change it. Now we have cue points and loops. I have snap loops to beaker in. I just like the snappiness and that's why I keep that. Now we're going to go down to sound. So over here, they give us some tools to make it easier for us, less stuff to worry about. So crossfader curve is on default, EQ type is classic. You could change it to isolator or you could do change your Nero mix or the FX routing. I keep it at post fader because I like doing echoes out and stuff. So if you have like an echo on and then you take it off, and take off the volume, you'll still hear the echo once that track is done. And this is really good for transitions, so I keep it like that. Audio limiter. 
This keeps you from breaking speakers. If you're doing a gig and they have expensive speakers that you're using or you bring your own speakers, you don't want to clip them. You don't want to damage them. You don't want to create really bad sound. So it prevents clipping and distortion and it limits the audio. Otherwise, if you make it as loud as it could go and you're redlining, it'll start to clip out some of the beats and some of the frequencies and it'll make your it'll make your DJing sound terrible because the speakers will be distorted. Now we have auto gain. What this does is it controls the gain. If you're a DJ that's used to using different software, you're used to adjusting the gain on your own every time you load a song. In DJ Pro, they make these gain controls really hard to use. So over here is the gain control. So they make it kind of like they want you to use the auto gain. So that's what I do. Now, now we're gonna go from sound. Let's go over here to the library. Remove songs when played. This helps you so you don't repeat the same song. You don't really wanna repeat songs when you're DJing. And this helps a lot. Appearance. It'll show the artwork. I like to see the art artwork. I think it's kind of cool while you're DJing to actually see the record covers. So that's what I do. And then I use Tidal streaming services. So over here is Tidal. If you want to log out, if you're having difficulty loading a song or you think there's a glitch or something and you just want to log out of your streaming service and log back in, this is where you do it. It could be kind of tricky to find. So you go to your settings and then you go to library and you can log out. Let's say if you want to switch accounts or something, that's where you can access that. Now let's go to appearance. So we got our appearance over here. I don't really mess with anything. The jog wheels, I keep it at extended. So if you go over here to pro mode, pro mode, what you can do is, you see how there's no jog wheels in pro mode right now? So you press this two or this one over here, and then you have access to this like secret waveform menu. So again, that's in pro mode. We're gonna go over here to the one, and now we have this waveform access. So I keep it on dark mode. If you turn dark mode off, it makes it a little harder to see the waveforms, so I keep it on. And then jog wheel. This jog wheel is off. You see how it's on off? We turn it on and we get the new jog wheels from the update. You could also change the waveform. If you're used to softwares where the waveform is vertical, you could switch it that way. But here's the jog wheel. Now let's go back over to appearance in settings. And then jog wheel style. You could do compact dark. That's what it looks like. You could do compact light. That's what it looks like. Or you could do extended. This makes a wider surface area on the jog wheel and it makes it easier to scratch with. So I keep it on. So now we're gonna go over here to advanced. And this is just your format and in your videos and stuff like that. And then we go to MIDI device setup. So I always put on crossfader cutting mode. This makes it so as soon as you move the crossfader over, it cuts it and it makes scratches like the chirp scratch and all these advanced scratches with the crossfader a lot easier when you're using a controller. And this is also where you'll have access to map the controllers if a controller is plugged in. So I'm just gonna plug this controller in one more time and show you guys that. And then you'll see the controller and then you could, you could click it and then this is the whole mapping menu. I made separate videos about that. So that's how you do that. And that those are the settings that I currently use. Just remember when you watch these tutorial videos, whether it's my videos or someone else, make sure that the stuff that you learn and if you decide to do it, that you decide it for yourself and not because someone told you because someone's style of DJing, somebody's settings may be different than what you need. So take, take what you learn and then make a decision for yourself. So if you like learning about DJing with DJ Pro and DJing with the iPad and the future of DJing, subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. I make DJ videos every single day.